begin with what do humans want? The number one desire of all humans is the desire for power. Every human on earth desires the same thing and it's power. Now most of you deny that because you are so religious. You actually run away from the reality that you desire power. Most of you believe you desire to be humble and you are dishonest. Every human being in this room, all of you are looking for position of influence. I guarantee it. I don't believe nothing you tell me about humility. I just humble, stop lying. If you gotta say you wanna be humble, that's evidence of pride. A humble person never has to say it. Other people tell them that. At least I faced my reality and became honest. This is one of my favorite leadership quotes by Nelson Mandela. This was given before he went to prison in 1964. Nelson Mandela said, during my lifetime, I've dedicated my life to the struggle of the African people. I have fought against white domination and I fought against black domination. I've cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all people live together in harmony and have equal opportunities. It's an ideal which I hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, he's talking to the judge. If it needs be, it's an ideal which I am prepared to die. Religion actually teaches you not to be yourself. It makes you apologize for being who you really are. As a matter of fact, religion encourages hypocrisy. It forces you to deny the truth about yourself under a false sense of humility. And this is why religious people are very dangerous people. Jesus called them hypocrites. A hypocrite simply means one with many faces. You define as hypocrite, but it's actually hypocrite. It means actor in the Greek language. And so we are not honest people when it comes to what we really want. The deepest desire in the human heart is the desire for power and greatness. Get over it and accept it. But if you're going to be really good, you got to get it down to a few areas where you say, what are the essential elements? What are the essential areas that a person really needs to grow in to be successful? Number one is confidence. Great leaders are confident in themselves. They're confident in their vision and they're confident in people. And the result of that confidence in themselves, their vision and the people, that the people have confidence in their leader. A confident leader gives people confidence. Now what is power? Power is the ability and the capacity to control circumstances and the environment. That's what power is. When we talk about power from the point of view of human nature, it has to do with controlling circumstances. If the bank calls in and says, look, we are going to foreclose on your house. How do you feel? You feel that you have lost the ability to control that circumstance. So what every human really wants is to control their circumstances. When you have enough money to pay your house off, you feel powerful. So life really is about power. This was difficult for me because I was so relationally driven in my early years. I just wanted everybody to love me. And I can tell you stories of compromises I made, stupid decisions I made, because I just wanted approval. I was so relationship driven that I just, you know, it was just, I just couldn't make a hard decision because what would somebody feel or what would somebody do? Or what would somebody think? Now you see me at this age. You have no idea how easy it is for me to look you in the eye and tell you the truth. I didn't get this way overnight, but I did get this way because there came a day in my life that I decided that I wanted to be a leader, not a clown. The other word I want you to define, write it down, is the word greatness. We all want to be great. What is greatness? Greatness is a sense of significance and value. And you want that, don't tell me. 
I know you. So let's talk about Jesus' definition of how to become great. I am interested because I was brought up like most of you. I was brought up in a very religious environment. I was taught to be low and humble at his feet. My father was a Baptist pastor. We didn't go to church meetings because we wanted to. So don't talk to me about religion. My father was the pastor. I was required to be in church or I would die three times a week, sometimes four. Religion? I'm an expert. And I was told that poverty keeps you humble. So I hated money because I wanted to be holy. And I was convinced by my religious upbringing that you should never desire to be the leader. You must never desire to be great. Never desire to be important. And don't ever use the word I. You were taught that. If you use the word I, I too much, they say you are selfish. It's all over the world. I respect my father more than any human being in this world. He's truly the greatest man I know. I was in an organization that was hurting my growth. I was in an organization where negativity reigned and it was full of dysfunction. And I was a young kid who really wanted to make a difference. I'd raise up and get, I'd get pounded back down. It's all I knew. It's where I got educated. It's where all my friends were. And my father was the most influential person in that organization. But in that little environment I grew up, all around me was poison. And I can remember at 33 deciding I had to leave that organization. It wasn't hard to leave the organization, but that meant I had to go to my father and tell him that I was going to leave what he loved and what he knew and what he had hoped for me. And I had to go walk into my father's life and say, Dad, I'm not following your footsteps here. I'm leaving this organization. I pray for his blessing, but if I don't get it, I'm going anyway. And I said goodbye to the people I knew and to the school I knew and to the church I knew and to the culture I knew. And I looked at my father and I said, Dad, I'm going. You can't talk me out of it. Can I have your blessing? There are some of you in this room, you'll never rise to your potential until you get rid of the people in your life. Are you hearing me? In other words, religion beats you down to nothing and then tells you you are holy. And under all of that is this desire to be powerful and to be great. So there is a contradiction in every religious person here. Everybody in this room want to feel important. Don't deny it. You want to feel valuable and you want to feel significant. That's why you wear the hairstyle you wear. That's why you wear the shoes you wear. That's why you try to wear things that don't even fit you. Because some significant person is wearing it and you want to feel significant. So you squeeze it on even though it doesn't look right because you are trying to find value. That's why you tell lies on your applications. That's why you embellish your own stories because you want to find significance. Listen, don't pretend, be honest. There's a popular cliche that says, you don't know what you can do until you try. I like that you never try until you know what you can do. Confidence releases the risk. The number one confidence killer is low self-image. I don't think I can rises from a deeper I don't think I am. Lower self-worth translates into 37% less willingness to negotiate and use of 11% fewer negotiation strategies. You won't even go and negotiate if you don't have the confidence. In short, the less confidence you have in yourself, the faster you will give up trying to get what you want. That's a fact. I want you to remember this. The desire for leadership, greatness, and power is natural. If you don't desire to be great and you don't desire to have power, you are not normal. And we got to understand this. It's just, this is what we've been sold. We've been sold a lie. We, we've been taught that you shouldn't desire to be great. So we feel guilty all the time. We've been convinced that we should not desire to be significant. 
or to feel valuable. Matter of fact, we actually lie to ourselves and other people saying, uh, I don't want anything, I, I, I just want to serve the Lord. Stop lying. And every human is driven by this. That's why there are gangs in your community. That's why your kids join gangs. They were looking for power and greatness. Pastors do it all the time. Why do you really want to be on TV? You're looking for power and greatness. And it's natural. Jesus Christ understands this. The concept of leadership and greatness presented by Jesus is what I call a paradigm shift. Your desire for greatness and your desire for power was God given. And you lost it. And you've been trying every possible alternative to get it back. That's why people carry guns to feel powerful. That's why people will sell their bodies for promotion on the stage of entertainment. They're looking for significance. And God knows that. Fear is another killer of confidence. You see, confidence comes from not always being right, but not fearing to be wrong. When you run into a confident person, the confident person isn't always right. They just don't fear being wrong. I can tell you every day, I'm confident about a lot of decisions. Now, some of the decisions I'm confident about aren't the best decisions, but I don't look at myself and say, well, what happens if I fail? What happens if I'm wrong? I, it, it, it just doesn't bother me. I, I don't fear that failure. When I see a person that quits quickly, they have low self-confidence, low self-esteem. That's why they quit. So Jesus comes to solve our problem of the desire for greatness and power. So I want to read his exact words concerning a seminar he had on how to become great, how to become a leader in your field, and how to become significant. You'll be amazed what I'm going to show you in a minute. In other words, his number one goal was to show you how to become the controller of your circumstances. How to become the leader in your environment. Every human wants to be the leader. That's why they complain about leaders. You criticize your leaders because you prefer to be one. That's why you talk about your pastor all the time. You really want to be the pastor. You think you can do a better job. You think he don't know what he's doing. Matter of fact, you are so smart. You got your PhD and this and that. You wondering why did God choose this person? I am so much better. That's why you criticize. You really want to be the leader. And that desire is natural. The third confidence killer is other people's opinion of you. That will suck confidence out of your body. If you worry about what people think of you, it's because you have more confidence in their opinion than you have of your own. Let's read what Jesus said about greatness. Matthew chapter 10 is actually a leadership seminar, like this one. And the teacher was Yeshua. He was with his students one day, that's what disciple means, means students, and he had chosen 12 of them to mentor. Two of them, they sent their mom, this is their mom, now we know he's going to listen to a woman. And you know how to tell the story, we are your children. So go there and, you know, make sure, make a way before the other guys beat us to it. Why? We want to be great. Desire for greatness. So it says, the mother of Zebedee's sons. You know who they are, right? James and John. And it says, she came to Jesus with her sons. Now, wait a minute. The guys are with her and they're afraid to talk. I don't want nobody to think I want to be great, but go ahead, talk. They are with her and she is talking on their behalf. The three qualities of a grounded leader are humility. They have an understanding of their place in light of God and others. Authenticity, they are comfortable in their own skin. And three, they have a calling, they have a purpose that is bigger than themselves. The second G is growing. The great leaders are growing. They have a hunger that makes them stretch. A growing leader is a little wiser today than he was yesterday. He never stops learning. He never stops reflecting. He's not afraid of change because he knows that growth is dependent on it. He is more concerned about getting better than being perfect. He is constantly looking to improve himself and the people around him. 
and you can do it. And it says, she knelt down before him and asked him a favor. A what? A favor. In other words, manipulation. She's jockeying for position for her sons. You gotta read the Bible very carefully, man. This is up to date. This is still going on now. There are people in your company, in your organization, who are jockeying for position, and they got people speaking for them. Jockeying for position. At the age of 30, I basically said this. I will first help others get what they want and what they need. Then they will help me get what I need. My wonderful friend Zig taught me that. Courage is the most important of all virtues. Because without it, you can't practice any other virtue with consistency. People don't follow titles, they follow courage. Now, I want you to watch what happens. Jesus asks the question. He says, what do you want, woman? She said, grant me that one of these two sons of mine, one will sit on your right and the other sit on your left. In other words, you're going to be the king. Forget the other ten. We're looking out for ourselves. She was one of them mothers looking out for their children. I wonder why. Maybe she is one of those mothers who want their son to be a football player so she can get the check. It's called fringe benefits of parents. Their mothers not to look out for them kids. So she's looking up for these boys and they're right there and she said, now I want one of my boys to sit on your right, one on your left. Watch this. When you come into your kingdom, she recognizes that Jesus Christ is a politician. He is the leader of a government and she wants her boys to be deputy prime ministers and she wants to get it in early before the other 10 realize what happened. If I could do anything for you, I would walk into your life and I would breathe courage into your life. And courage is a result of confidence. You have never seen a courageous person that didn't have confidence. It is not the difficulties that defeat us. It's the lack of confidence in ourselves that defeats us. Confidence is the cornerstone of leadership. Write this down. The secret desire of all humans is what? Positions of influence. That's what she was looking for for her sons. Or that's what they were looking for through her. They were looking for what? Influence. Influence is leadership. Jesus turns to her and he said, you're asking the wrong question. Let me prove that. Verse 22 of Matthew 20 says, you don't know what you are asking. See, he says, you asked the wrong question. Your question was, how do we get to sit where you sit? Wrong question. If you want to be a leader and want to be great and want to have power, you don't pursue them. And you never ask a person who have them to give them to you. Wrong question. And then he says, Here's a question you should have asked. Can you drink the cup that I am going to drink? My growth journey from here to there has been often lonely. The reason is that I'm willing to admit wrong because of my desire to grow and change. Growth is a result of bad habits dropped, wrong priorities changed, and new ways of thinking embraced. The people who do not grow are unwilling to leave what they have known and practiced. They're not willing to admit wrong so they can discover what is right. Therefore they cling to right and their lives turn out wrong. How sad, surrender of being right is a prerequisite to finding right. The question is never how can I sit where you are. The question is what kind of cup did you drink to get there? People don't understand leadership. You can't buy leadership. No one can give you leadership. Wrong question is that. Can you drink what? The cup. He tied the position with a cup. Write this down. Every position has a cup. 
So don't ask about the position. Ask about the cup. I love him so much, Jesus. What a man.